Hi, I am British and the UK is a long way away from Mexico. As a result, whereas the Americans tend to have some level of contact with Mexicans, the British really don't know anything about Mexico. The result is that Hollywood is the biggest influence on the British understanding of Mexico. When I arrived in Mexico, I was shocked to discover that many of my presuppositions in regards to the country were seriously mistaken. To understand the nature of the presuppositions, we have to observe the underlying messages held within Hollywood movies. To get the idea, we will look at seven programs quickly and identify what they communicate about Mexicans and Mexico. Following that, we will fix the problem and address the issues held within the movies. In 2010, 20th Century Fox released the movie The A-Team, based on the 80 series. In the beginning of the movie, we see a typical fat, sweaty, unshaven, violent Mexican policeman in a vest beating up an American. Then the following scene leads to another part of the Mexican desert with an unkempt Mexican general speaking unusually with a Chilean accent. His troops in rag order, unshaven with scruffy long hair. It doesn't get any better than this, right? <laughs> I'm living the dream. <laughs> Like all Mexicans, the general is violent, but fortunately the American has a strong jaw to withstand the heaviest blows. Good morning! Hey! Good morning, now! Now it's a party! <laughs> is that your best job? All together now. Oh, say, can you see? In the 1995 movie Desperado, Antonio Banderas stars as a mariachi singer who seeks revenge against a drug lord. In the beginning of the movie, an American walks into a typical scruffy Mexican bar with unkempt, dirty Mexicans gambling while sitting on uncomfortable chairs. Barely a conversation takes place. The American goes to the bar and requests a beer from a hot, sweaty, dirty, unshaven Mexican. Clint Eastwood starred in the 1964 movie A Fistful of Dollars. He enters a typical Mexican hamlet in the desert. Your average Mexican male comes out, a wannabe child killer. The child runs back to his Caucasian mother pretending to be a Latina with a fat, unshaven, sweaty, violent, sombrero-wearing Mexican in pursuit. You, you settle with me. Hijo de puta que te parió! You pay for this! I hope you end up in a graveyard! With the cholera and the rabies and the plague, coming loose! The condemned is found guilty of the crimes of murder, armed robbery of citizens, state...
In the 1966 Western, The Good, the Bad and the Ugly, you have your white man pretending to be a typical, scruffy, unshaved, sweaty Mexican criminal. Silencio. The film Men in Black grossed $587 million at the box office. And a Hollywood movie would not be a Hollywood movie without starting with, guess what? You guessed it, scruffy Mexicans in a desert. Here we see our run-of-the-mill Mexican illegal immigrants crossing the border. Wow, pick the deck, what a surprise. Where are you coming from, Nick? America's finest identify the crime. We say we take a look at your catch, huh? Come on. So, Nick, what do you get? Like 100 bucks I had here? 200? Hope you saved it all for your lawyer, my friend, because you are gonna need it. But the men in black come and interfere in the situation. We'll take it from here. Me too. Que dice si te rompo la cara? They have deep knowledge about the situation and identify that one of the immigrants is not who he is pretending to be. We're going to have a little chat with our friend here. You fellas can hit the road. Keep on protecting us from the dangerous aliens. They take him out into the desert. Looks like you fell off the bus in the wrong part of town, amigo. In fact, I'm going to bet dollars to pay so you're not from anywhere near here. Mikey? Hey! money Behind his hot, unshaven, sweaty, scruffy self lies an alien pretending to be a Mexican. So the alien, who has traveled maybe light years across the universe to get to planet Earth, is cleaner than the Mexican he is pretending to be. You hear me that head. We must find water. My throat is so dry. It's no use, Speedy. I am too thirsty to go on. Speedy Gonzalez made his appearance in Warner Brothers Looney Tunes cartoons from the early 1950s. The fastest mouse in Mexico would be seen with his sombrero running in the desert, helping his compatriots. Look! A canteen! Oh, we are saved! A canteen full of water! By 2002, this cartoon was no longer on show because of its ethnic stereotypes, although Latin American countries actually love the program. <laughs> Jose, look, look, we are rescued. Holy free holies, it's an oasis. The 1990 movie Young Guns 2 was based on the life of Billy the Kid. Near the end, Arkansas' Dave Rudabar flees across the border and bumps into the indigenous community. Hey, uh, is this old Mexico here? Uh... Este es Mexico, ¿eh, amigos? We see two typical sombrero-wearing, lazy Mexicans sitting their butts on a dusty floor. One of them poorly shaven, the other unusually with a seemingly stylish beard. You know the name? <laughs> I know the name. So if you were to watch Hollywood movies enough, you would eventually come to the conclusion that Mexico is a hot, dusty place where very little grows, and hot, sweaty Mexicans roam a barren land wearing large ponchos. Other times you see fat, mustached, gangster-type Mexicans wearing a string vest. So, are Mexicans dirty? Let's get to the point. No. No. No! Let me give you an example. I have a Mexican friend and his brother went to Germany on an exchange. The guy had a shower at least once and sometimes twice a day. After a few days of this, 
the German family had had enough and limited his shower events to only once a day. I've heard of this happening a number of times. The reality is that Mexicans think that Europeans especially are members of the Great Unwashed. From the Mexicans' perspective, Europeans are sweaty, dirty people who don't read the signals that it's time to do something about the odour emanating from their armpits. Mexicans are obsessed with their image. They dress well and they clean up well. They are paranoid that they don't smell well. So remember that the next time you watch a Hollywood movie about Mexico. And so we come to the question, is Mexico a desert? In many ways, Hollywood has a point painting Mexico as a desert, in that a significant amount of the US-Mexican border is desert. There are three significant deserts in Mexico. The Sonoran Desert, the Chihuahuan Desert, and the Baja California Desert. Together they comprise about 35% of the Mexican land surface. The three deserts together come to twice the size of Germany. The temperatures in the Chihuahuan Desert can climb to 40 degrees centigrade. But this is not the whole story. We still have to talk about the other 65%. The rest of Mexico is still three and a half times bigger than Germany, filled with plants, animals, farms, mountains, volcanoes, canyons, jungles and a wide variety of life. Mexico is filled with fruit. There are areas where there is so much fruit that the indigenous let them fall to the floor and don't even collect them. They lack the education to try and sell them. I have been to places where within a small area you can see oranges, lemons, avocados, coffee and corn all growing in one field. So I thought I'd just include a few clips showing the Western viewer the beauty and fertility of the land of Mexico. Let's go! 